Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of the Spurs Chat Podcast. Of course, Spurs beat Luton 2-1 on Saturday in the Premier League. We are now only three points away from the top four. Of course, we have that game in hand over Aston Villa. I'm absolutely delighted to bring on again Jazz from the West Ham Irons channel. Of course, Spurs face West Ham at the London Stadium on Tuesday evening, 8.15pm kickoff. Jazz, lovely to have you back. How are you? Really happy, you know, we all love um, bank holidays, so happy Easter to everyone. I'm doing very well, thank you. Doing very well, busy. Yeah, trying to do a bit of the YouTube channel. Um, I don't go to as many games as I used to, but we'll go into that bit later on. So busy with a lot of things around the house, doing the gardening and busy with the kids. And yeah, I'm doing good though, doing good. What about yourself? How you been? We haven't caught up in a while. How you been? All right? I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm enjoying the football under Ange. Um, of course, it is all going to take time, but where Spurs are in the Premier League table right now, I cannot complain whatsoever. Let's hope that Spurs will be back in the Champions League next year. Uh, that will certainly be great to be back in the Champions League if it happens. Um, Jazz, let's talk a little bit about West Ham because how has your season gone so far? Because, you know, you're seventh in the league table. Um, you've got Bayer Leverkusen in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. What's the mood like amongst the fan base right now? You, you remember the last time we spoke and you were quite surprised how I was quite negative about a lot of things, which yeah. kind of kind of were relating to the way we were playing. It was very negative. And I remember in the chat, great feedback, positive feedback from the Spurs fans. So thank you for that. And they were saying that, yeah, I sound like they did last season with Mourinho and Conte. Like, yeah, the football, the results are coming now and again, but the performances are really bad. And that's where I was coming from. And I remember telling you, Chris, that whatever happens in our game last time around, that if we win, you're going to say, how do we do it? And that's exactly what happened. We yeah. won, but we got roasted. Mate. <laughs> you got... And that's what I kept telling you, that don't look at the results, look at the performances, and you're going to walk out that game thinking, how did West Ham win that? And it's been a bit of that, mate. But yes, the league table says we're seventh. But when you look at the games in hand everyone's got, we could be as low as 11th, really. So don't look at that sort of that much and you know the league's a bit weird the bottom 10 are really really poor mate so you could lose two three games in a row and you're still in a mix it's still fine i mean you know man united chelsea they're a shadow of themselves you got newcastle with their off the pitch problems you got us we're not really that consistent brighton they win four nil they lose four nil it's a complete it's that kind of league apart from Fifth and sixth upwards, you guys are okay. You're fairly consistent. You've got good quality squads week in, week out. You do well. But apart from that, all the rest of us, we're about as good as each other, mate. So I wouldn't look at the league table too much. But it, it's still the same. You saw the last result, mate. We were 3-1 up. And he pulls off the only striker we've got with 15, 20 minutes to go. We're well on top, mate. 3-1, looking to make it 4 and, and yeah, he brings on Calvin Phillips, who we're going to a bit later on, hasn't quite worked out for him, didn't need him. And, and Chris, we were, we were playing without a striker again. He doesn't yeah. sign any strikers. We don't really have any striker. Antonio is a converted winger striker. We haven't got anyone. And then he takes the only one who's doing that job. No focal point. We collapse like a yeah deck of cards, mate. Lost 4-3. It's, it's a bit of that he does, mate. And he does that in a lot of the games that will go on. The last five, six games, West Ham, we've dropped like seven points, mate. You know, we drew at Sheffield United, who are the worst team in Premier League history I can remember. Burnley won one, mate, due to substitutions. We're murdering Villa 1-0. He does that dodgy substitution again. And then it's 1-1 and we should have lost that, mate. So it's a bit up and down, mate. It's a bit up and down. We are in the Europa quarterfinals, looking forward to that. But but deep down, David Moyes hopefully doesn't get a contract in the summer, mate. Hopefully not had enough of him, seriously. Jazz, I'm going to ask you that same question I asked you earlier on in the season, um, before the last game, which, of course, as you rightly mentioned, you beat us 2-1 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. What percentage of the fan base do you think is behind David Moyes and want him to continue at the club? Because, you know, many, many people, you know, Spurs fans, you know, we, we're dying, well, we're crying out for a trophy. You won a trophy, you won the Europa Conference League. Um, of course, you're sitting seventh in the league table right now. You're in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Many people would say, what's the issue? But how many, what percentage would you say is behind the manager right now? I think when we did our earlier show in the reverse fixture, I would say around, it was around 50-50. 
But now we've seen Fulham beat us 5-0 at their ground. You've seen Arsenal whack six past us. We've gone at the FA Cup to Bristol City. Lots of things have happened, including Newcastle. I reckon it's much more 70-30 now. 70% want him gone, 30 don't. He doesn't help himself, Chris. He's been around for eight, nine, ten transfer windows. We've got the second oldest team in the league. We've got a bench, which is really bad. He won't even use, and it's his bench, his squad. So apart from the 11 that we can conjure up on the playing field, which are kind of half decent, mate, we've got no strikers. We've got no subs, no rotation we can do, mate. And it's due to all those reasons that he's a bit stubborn, doesn't learn. No coach stays around with him more than a year. The backroom team, apart from Nolan, everyone has left after a year. Nevin has gone off to England. He's Southgate's assistant. Um, Stuart Pearce walked out after a couple of years. Warburton has been quite vocal on YouTube saying that he didn't want to earn the money. Where He, he goes, there's no point staying at West Ham with the manager if he's not going to have any input from me, not going to listen to me. That, I can earn the money and sit next to him. He's that kind of guy, mate. He's old school. He's stubborn. He doesn't change his way. He's predominantly negative about everything in terms of sticking as many people behind the ball as possible, even though you're like two, three nil up. It doesn't tally with the West Ham mentality, mate. That, that, that's the thing. Yeah, so 70 30, I think. Yeah. Interesting. Um, on Monday, Ange Postacoglu and David Moyes both had their press conferences. Ange Postacoglu said the challenge now is to finish the season strong. Talking about Captain Hunmin Son, he said he is a leader. He has been outstanding this season. Team use of Spurs, everyone is good. Uh, no change. And David Moyes said we will support Calvin Phillips. I know you just touched um, upon that situation with Calvin Phillips, Jazz. I'll ask you about that in a minute. David Moyes also said it's going to be a really difficult game. Ange Postacoglu is doing a great job. Uh, team news for West Ham. Ariola is forced out. Fabianski will play in this game. Um, Jazz, what has happened to um, Calvin Phillips? Because, of course, you know, got the move to West Ham from Manchester City. Um, a lot of West Ham fans were probably quite excited uh, when he signed. What, what's gone wrong there? When January the 1st, if you go back to that day or the, around there, we had a very freaky December where we, we beat Arsenal, mate, 2 0 at hot, their ground. We beat Man United without deserving it. I don't know how we did it. We had one or two shots in the whole game, 10% possession. We won all those games. We're sitting very comfortably in sixth place. A nice cushion above Brighton, Man United, European football. There we go again. Transfer window opens. We thought, he's not that stupid. We're going to buy a striker. We've got to buy a left winger because we let go of two, three people on loan. Didn't do anything. When Calvin Phillips came in, I was really happy because, Chris, I didn't know that that's the only signing we're going to make. If I knew that was the only guy, because we didn't need him in that position. But it's a very expensive loan deal. But obviously, he, comes, he came with, yeah, England regular, good reputation, 53 million, came to Man City. If Pep signs you, you've got to have something about you, even though he didn't really play many games. So what it is at West Ham, first of all, is when we sign a player, we don't know who signed him. Is it Sullivan, the owner, who loves buying strikers? Sam Allardyce once said that at the training ground, Sullivan used to sell him, I've got a little present for you here. He used to, he used to buy him players, and Sam would know nothing about it. Like, here you go, here's a striker for you. Either him... David Moyes likes signing CDMs and defenders and that kind of robust player. So Calvin Phillips is a Moyes signing. Whereas the new recruitment guy, um, Tim Steiton, who was linked with Liverpool, come from Germany with a huge reputation. He's responsible for bringing in um, Kudos, Alvarez, who amazingly hit the ground running. And he goes for the younger, we're turning into the IX model, buy young youthful players and sell them on in four or five years. Whereas David Moyes wants the Maguire types, McTominay types, Calvin Phillip types, the slow, sluggish, 28, 20 year old, you know, typical. So when he came in, I was happy, Chris, but if I'd known that he's the only guy coming in, I wouldn't have been so happy. And unfortunately, mate, I think in every star, it's either been a sending off or a penalty given or a goal given, mate. Every mm. single game, it's gone against him. And then I don't know if you saw the videos of him walking up to the the team bus and he stuck his yeah. middle finger at a couple of fans. And I think after that, it's going to be difficult for him to get much um, game time, mate. And it's, it's not worked out for him. The fans don't want him anymore. He's, he's, not, he's not done well on the pitch, mate. And I think put on a personal level, you probably have to drop to the championship, mate. He's gone so far down in terms of what he perhaps was in the past, what he is now, mate. It's 
it, it's it's um yeah it hasn't worked out mate and um it wasn't something really needed we needed a striker we needed someone a bit more tacking and a younger guy to help out in the back force quite an aging defense we've got wrong signing mate just hasn't hasn't worked out mate but thankfully it wasn't permanent bloody hell Jets Fabianski will, of course, play in this game on Tuesday at London Stadium against Spurs. Um, Ariola out. Um, is that going to be a huge miss for you? No, no. I think Fabianski and Ariola are quite similar. Ariola is a great, great shop stopper in the French squad. Not very good communication wise, um, not good at coming out, but good shop stopper. Fabianski is much more experienced, older, keeps himself relatively fit. Um, similar issues again, stays very stuck on his goal line doesn't come out as much not commanding you know sometimes is, is the center half going to clear it or is he going to clear it not much difference mate he, he's steady and he's okay he got a few things wrong a few things they do good so not not much for me unfortunately Ariola being a big miss i don't think so i think he was having a few issues in form anyway i think we've conceded the most goals in the league apart from Sheffield United, Burnley and Luton, which says a, a lot for a so-called defensive, well-organised manager, mate. Take take that. <laughs> take that. Yes. Of salt, mate. I'll come on to some of these interesting stats. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, what have you made of Spurs this season? Because, of course, Spurs are fifth. Um, what have you made of the um, the work that Ange Postacoglu has done so far? Hey, I'm very, very jealous. Very, very jealous. You've got a manager I would love. I would love to pay money to go and watch what he's doing. It, it's great football. It's brave football. It's, it's, it's Tottenham culturally, you know, the Glenn Hoddles and Aussie. It's that, it's the football that you guys want. And I wish we had a bit of that. And the amount of difference he's done in just two transfer windows, completely overhauled everything. There's half a team there. Then I didn't know who they were last season. They just come in, either they came in on loan or he's got Madison and people are like that. Even Werner's doing all right under you guys. Um, he's getting a little bit of everyone. And I know you got your negative people saying, oh, you can't play like that next season. He'll come down. But I wouldn't listen to that. I think it's very, very brave. It's wonderful to watch and it's entertainment. That's what it's about. What I would say to everyone is if you go down that little poor run of form, stick with him. And I hope the chairman does as well. And you keep buying those cup of players that fit in the model, really. So he's a manager that clearly knows how he wants to play. And he's buying players according to that plan. And they're fitting in like a puzzle. That's what football's about. Whereas at West Ham, we buy a player. We don't know who's bought them out the three. How they're going to fit in sometimes. So long may it carry on. Very jealous and happy for you, mate. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Just um, talking about the January transfer window, you mentioned Calvin Phillips there. Of course, West Ham signed him in January. We got uh, Radu Dragushin and, of course, as you just mentioned, Timo Werner. Um, a lot of Spurs fans were quite sceptical about that signing of Timo Werner. It is an initial loan and we do have an option to buy him for around £15 million in the summer. What did you think of that move at the time? Two things, three things, actually. One was, yes, the last time we saw him at Chelsea, he was very, very poor. He couldn't finish, came with a huge reputation. It all gone at the end. But then he's kind of resurrected himself, got back on form. And I would just trust your manager more than anything. If your manager has spotted something in him, that, and, and, and I, know, I know the players you guys are signing, you're signing fairly youngish players, dynamic players, fast players, and that fits your model, mate. And and he'll fit in any of those three, four positions up front. And the fifteen million optional fee is a steal, mate. I think yeah. it's a steal because I I think Chelsea paid fifty, sixty. I can't remember back in the day. So I think loan deals. I wish we did more proper loan deals. Loan deals, like you said, less risky. Let's have a good four or five month look at him. And I believe he hit the ground running. He's played in nearly every single game. He's even added one or two goals, one or two assists. I think. I think for all those reasons, it's the manager I would trust. So you guys are in a place where whoever you go for, hopefully Daniel Levy's left him alone, trust him, and I would trust the manager. I think, and and it's worked out to be half a decent, good signing, mate. I think, yeah, I think he, I think he's doing good. Yeah, what you touched upon, uh, you know, the two transfer windows that Andrew's had so far have been superb, and and the main difference is that we've got the business done early, which as Spurs fans we are not used to. Um, Jazz, what have you made of the last 10 games or so? Because you've conceded in every single game, uh, letting in 24 goals. Of course, you touched upon the defeat at the weekend. Funny enough, I was at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at the time. Um, 
eating some dinner and looked up, saw that West Ham were three one up, and, and you know raised my eyebrows like, wow, you know they're three one up at St James's Park, not an easy place to go, I might add. And then um, I kept being nudged, going Newcastle scored, Newcastle scored, Newcastle scored. I couldn't believe it. What happened on Saturday? What what was the main reasons? Why did it all go wrong? Um, the core reason, mate, for Newcastle's performance and a lot of performances this season has been the the quality of the squad. So David Moyes, naturally, by character, he doesn't like to sign players. He's very slow. He dillies and dallies a lot when players are offered to him. It takes far too long to decide if he wants him or not. So every transfer window is painful. And we either end up forcing players down his throat at the end of the window and no one knows Jazz, I, who they I, are. I get that. I, I get that every single um, football fan always wants more in a transfer window. I get that. But on Saturday, of course, there's no transfer window opened. Um, you know, on, on Saturday, you're free one up at Newcastle. What no, went no, no, wrong... So the reason the link to the transfer window is that yeah. Tony has just come back. He's 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 out for about four or five months, right? And every game he's been taking him off after 50, 60 minutes. We don't know if that's David Moyes' decision or whether Antonio really needs it. So going back to why I was mentioning the window, you took Antonio off. We ha we've got no striker at the club. So when you look to the bench... You take a striker, focal point out of it. It's like driving a car with one tire missing. He brings on a CDM. And that's why we've lost. We've got no striker up front for the for the remaining 15, 20 minutes. Bowen, kudos, Paqueta. Those three are probably as best you're going to get in the Premier League out of any team. They're, they're, world, they're amazing, right? And they, they just lost heart. They didn't have anyone to play one twos off up front. They didn't want to play up front anymore because Moyes is always forcing Bowen to go up front on his own or or kudos and things like that. So the biggest reason was taking off Antonia as a striker, not replacing like for like. And then how the hell can you... You gave Newcastle... I mean, Newcastle, I think they bought five subs on. They were losing players. Almond came on and off in the same bloody game. And and that's it. And, and the penalty didn't help. It wasn't a penalty. That didn't help. But I don't want to look at that. I want to look at the longer picture and saying... And he's done that before, mate. It's, it's a negative manager. You guys are positive. You're down to nine... In that Chelsea game, you bring on more attacking players. We're winning by two, clear. We're ready for the 4-1. He brings on the main striker who's bringing everything together, mate. And that's that's the reason that he, he took off the striker, didn't replace him. We haven't got a striker. So you got Danny always, Ings, but he can't, he can't play up front by himself. It's, it also, know, so I, Danny, Danny Ings yeah. is a Sullivan signing. There's an example. So he, he won't play three, four players because they're not his signings. They're someone yeah. else's signings. So it's mad. Jack, you mentioned, you, you mentioned Tottenham's high line. What do you make of that? And what did you make of that Chelsea game? It was very brave football. I think... Um, if, if there was another five, ten minutes, people not sure if Tottenham would have gone back and grabbed some points. It was going that much and, and that much fitness that quickly he's done it. With nine players on the pitch, you were virtually outrunning the Chelsea team. It was amazing. Your high line is about... I was watching the Arsenal-Man City game and Arsenal are a bit similar. Wow. Always got five, six people in the opposition penalty area, even when they're away. And I think you guys are not far from that. It's risky, but... You've got the confidence. The managers have given the players the confidence, the freedom to say, if you lose it dribbling, don't worry. Try again with David Moyes. If you try dribbling with him once, and Ben Rama did it as an example, tried a few tricks, lost it once or twice, he was never the same player again, subbed him straight away. So I think it's the confidence installed in the players to say, just play, just keep playing like this. Don't worry about the high line. We've got fairly young, pacey defenders. I think the Dutch guy is fairly fast, and the fullbacks are young and dynamic. Hopefully, you can recover that. And even if you go 2 0 down, I, I look at your results sometimes. I remember the Sheffield United. I, I, I was saying to my son, Tottenham going to win this in extra. They, they'll win it in, right at the end because you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. And um, I, I think it, I think it's great, Chris. It's risky football. It's entertaining football. It's football with big balls, mate. And and that's it, I think it's lovely. I think it, but you've got to be careful. If you're loving it now, stick with him when you when you go a little bit bumpy up and down. You gotta you gotta stay loyal long term. Not not a lot of those Guna fans where they swear at a player one show, next show he's their best mate, and vice versa. Well, so it's it, it's an it's an interesting point, Jazz, because when it was a half time. We were 1-0 down at half-time against Luton on Saturday. 
there were some fans booing inside the Tottenham really? Hotspur Stadium. Wow. That's the first wow. time I've known uh, some fans to boo, which, which was quite surprising. But <laughs> as you've mentioned, Tottenham have earned 22 points from losing positions during this season, which is three short of a club record in a Premier League campaign and second only to Liverpool in the current season. One player that does really worry me on the West Ham team is Jared Bowen, because, of course, Spurs were heavily linked with Bowen. Uh, you know, over the years. Jared Bowen has scored 15 Premier League goals this term, one shy of the Hammers club record set by Paolo Di Canio in the 99-2000 season. Jazz, how good is Bowen? Bowen is very, very reliable, very, very solid, like Rice, doesn't get injured a lot, touch wood. Came as a winger from Hull, um, hit the ground running, mate. He'll run all day for you. Like, if there's one of those SAS fitness tests tomorrow, he'll pass it. It's one of those. He'll run through brick walls for you. Yeah, predominantly winger, but David Moyes has kind of abused the situation and made him play up front on his own, even though he's not very tall, strong. I mean, tall. He's not He's not kind of one of those um, target fullbacks or ty um, target strikers physical you get. He, you play up to him on the floor, you can keep it up a little bit and stuff like that. Finishing's really improved. And for the two games that England international is one of the best players, I thought very, very good. Saka didn't play. Bowen done really, really well. But the worry for you, mate, is that Kudos and Paqueta are just as good. Those three, Paqueta is making such a big name for him at the moment. Some people said he was a man of the match in the England-Brazil game at Wembley. Pep is very, very closely linked with him. Probably going to go in the window. There's an 85 million clause in his game. So I think out of those three, you're going to have your kind of, yeah, your work cut out. Um, Antonio, you all know about him. He loves playing Spurs. So I think the four four we got up front are a match for anyone in the league. The worry is where the advantage for you is going to be when the clock hits 60, 65 minutes. He's going to probably want to take Antonio off and there's no one to come on, mate. You'll bring a defender on and that's where it's going to get interesting. But up to the point, those four are on the pitch. I think we're going to be in the game with you. I'm not saying we're going to win, but I wouldn't say we're going to lose either. We're going to be in there neck and neck. Um, defence is an issue, but we're going to that later on. It's slow. It's old. Um, Alvarez is missing, mate. You might have, I don't know if you picked it up in your lineups. Alvarez as a CDM has been one of the best signings for us from Ajax. One of the best CDMs I've seen for a while. He's suspended. He gets booked in every single game. Warpaus and Suchek are going to be the two CDMs, and they're not good, mate. So you, you, I think you're... I think our back four and CDMs is where you're going to get out. Get out. Jazz, us, let, let, let's have a look how West Ham lined up um, against Newcastle on Saturday. Um, of course, we know the goalkeeper is going to change. Um, what other players would you see coming in and perhaps dropping out? I think that looks pretty similar. So, in an ideal scenario, we would have taken Ward Prowse out and put Alvarez in as a proper CDM. So the weak points, I think the back four is going to be the same, very old. I mean, Kofal's okay. You can give out a bit. Kofal and Emerson are all right. They're in their 30s, but they're having an okay season. Mavropinus, um, yeah, he used to be with Arsenal, came from German football, quite tall, gets the odd goal, but he's got this thing where he often loses it in dangerous areas, back passes, he's letting a couple of goals. Zuma, He's got a knee issue long term, but he's soldiering on. He's our captain, but not very vocal at that. Back four is going to be that. Like you said, goalkeeper is going to be um, different. War Prowse and Suchek, that's going to be where Tottenham can be strong. I think they're not really that strong CDM. Suchek relies on getting those late, late goals from corners and crosses. The front four is where, where we're at our best, I think. And going back to all David Moyes had to do just buy a normal striker. In the winter, we would have we would have been really really comfortable top six easily, but that is that that you can't play about striker mate. We don't have one, but whilst Antonio's on the pitch, as long as he can, I think we'll give you a good game. I think yeah. Yes, what have you made of uh, James Ward Prowse since signing for West Ham? Because he is a man that loves to play against Spurs. He has either scored or assisted a goal. Um, in each of his last six games against Tottenham, scoring four and assisting three. Now, Spurs were linked with him. And I remember a lot of Spurs fans saying um, he's not that great. He's, he's fantastic at free kicks, but you're not really going to get much else. I'm a big fan of James Ward-Prowse. I'd have loved to have seen him in a Spurs shirt. What does he give you uh, in that midfield? I think, first of all, 
if I go through the bad points, it's that um, do you really want to be paying 30, 35 million for a 29, 30 year old player? If you're going in that kind of direction, ambition, young, dynamic. So that's the, yeah, that's what we did. We paid a lot of money for a season pro. Hasn't got much pace. Um, yeah, is he a CDM? Is he not a CDM? I don't know. Those are kind of the weak things out the way. The good things are he's a great professional, great lad, doesn't get injured a lot, came as a captain from Southampton. So, yeah, a bit of a leader. Set pieces, corners, really, really good. Surprisingly, he's gone out, he's gone the longest time without scoring a free kick. He hasn't scored a free kick for West Ham. Oh, you've said in. it now. You've said he it hasn't... now. <laughs> he hasn't scored, not been given many. He's just recently become a penalty taker and he put one in and he scored from it. He puts it on a sixpence time after time, and we just don't make the most of it. So, corners and free kicks, set pieces are really, really good. Apart from that, He's not really a CDM. Suchek is a bit of a Gus Poye type. He's not really a CDM. So that's where the weakness lies, you know. But, yeah, if, if you're really rich enough and you can afford a squad player on the bench, someone like that, amazing. But a game like tomorrow, yeah, I hope he, hope he benefits from some of his set pieces because the other side of his, his game is a little bit 50, iffy. But it's a bit 50-50, isn't it? 60-40 is good. 60-40, I would say, yeah. But well, I'm we, happy we, to have him. Yeah, he's all right. He's all right. You've mentioned about him scoring. We haven't seen James Madison score a free kick for Spurs yet, so hopefully that will happen at the London Stadium on Tuesday evening. Um, <laughs> Jazz, wanted to ask you um, about Hunmin Son because, of course, um, five of Hunmin Son's 15 goals this season have been the winner. Of course, he grabbed another winner at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Saturday against Luton. And Postacoglu absolutely loves him. You know, a real leader. He's our captain. What, have you, what do you make of him? I picked him as a danger uh, man every time Spurs play West Ham, including our last show. So, again, I'm very, very scared of him, Chris, <laughs> because he's probably got one of the best shots in football last two, three, four, five years. So the way he's able to run and just get that shot on target with such fierce venom and accuracy, I don't think many can. He's just got that in his locker, mate. And Physically, he's very, very strong. He can bomb up and down, and he's beginning to get more of that sort of senior captaincy role at Spurs, which I don't know if he's reveling in it or really enjoying it. I haven't followed recently. But, yeah, he's, he's a – again, I always say to my son, again, Chris, I'm honest, I don't know how he's still at Spurs. I don't know. I thought – a bit like the Harry Kane, are they going to win something? Are they not both of them? It'll be a shame. So I'm pretty surprised no one else has picked him up, certainly two years ago. But it seems like he's, he's somewhere he's – He's loved, he's happy, he loves London. And yeah, you get some players like that, which is good to see, good to see a bit of loyalty. So Son for me will always be the danger person for me, um, alongside obviously Madison, who funny enough, when I do my show, someone like Madison is who I would look like in the next window for us behind in that central position, but quite a bit back, I think. So I don't know how many of Madison types are around, like a pure number 10. Everything goes through him like a Glenn Hoddle type. But yeah, yeah, I heard he's hit the ground running and injuries are the only thing you worry about. And he's all right. Yeah. Like they're still, they're still around, not as bad as Harvey Barnes. He's suffered a lot. But um, so I think Son for me, Chris, always will be, always Son. Yeah, can't switch off from him. Jad, what, what other Spurs players are you worried about? I think I think Madison. I think Madison is the one I worry about. Um, I had a look at your team. Why didn't did Romero play last time and the Dutch centre back? Did they play last game or didn't they? I don't know. R R R Romero played. Dragushin came in. Um, Van der Ven. I'm fully expecting to start at West Ham on Tuesday. Yes, yeah, so these, these are all big players. Very quick players. Very good players. The thing with Romero is I'm always worried who's he going to bash, which players he's going to kill out of our team. He's, he's lethal. He's but calmed Alves, down. Oh, I don't know. I don't know whether I believe that. I've got to see that. <laughs> my, he's, he's a nutter. But, um, yeah, because we've got Alvarez who gets a yellow card every game, but he's not going to be there. So that would have been a Mex Mexico versus Argentina battle tomorrow. Unfortunately, we're not going to see that. And, um, yeah, I reckon, I reckon physically, let, let's see how Spurs match up. We're losing a bit of that bite in the middle, I think. Um, I, I think Son and Madison are the ones. that Everything goes through them. They're going to have a hand in a goal if there is one, and we'll see it. But with our front four, your defence is good, but I think it's going to be a good battle in the front four. Our weaknesses, like I said, the goalkeeper's all right, all right. Back fours, 
all right, nothing more than that. CDM's up, all right. It's going to be the front four, Chris. You're going to have to keep an eye on, mate. And and and, and don't look at the um, the possession stats or the ratios. I think you've learned from the last game. If you're all over us, it doesn't mean you don't know what's going to happen because we're very good on the counter-attack. Very, very good, especially with Bowen, Kudos, Magicians, mate, them four. So I wouldn't look at that too much. If it's half-time, even if you're 1-0 up and you battered us, you don't know with us, as you know, in <laughs> second half. All it the takes is, is a Warprouse corner and a weird goal, and it, it, we're back in it. The thing is, Jazz, we, we've had a couple of quite weird weeks because, of course, we've had the international break. But before that, we went away to Aston Villa, which we thought was going to be a very, very difficult game. Probably our best performance of the season, beating them 4-0. Um, and then, of course, we went away to Fulham. We lost 3-0. And then, of course, we made it extremely difficult for ourselves on Saturday against Luton. And as I mentioned, a couple of fans or a number of fans inside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium were booing. Um, so it does feel a little bit weird at the moment. And where a lot of fans were really on a high earlier on in the season, you know, especially after 10 games sitting top of the Premier League, of course, you know, I was under no illusion that Spurs were going to go on to win the Premier League, but we were enjoying it at the time. Um, but we were playing some super entertaining football that has kind of dropped off a little bit. So this is going to be a very, very interesting game. And we always know that West Ham are very, very up for this game. Would you say it is your number one fixture as a West Ham fan, Tottenham at home or Tottenham away? It isn't actually. It's Man United. It's Man United. It? Funny. But it's very close. Tottenham are second. We look at the home fixtures in terms of atmosphere and what you look forward to. Man United edges it traditionally, and Tottenham a second, and um, Arsenal, Chelsea, they don't get anywhere near. So those two, yeah, more or less, are up there. And we're at home, like you said, um, yeah, London derby. Don't know what's going to happen. Form what they used to say, form out the window, and all that kind of thing. Is it going to rain? Is that going to affect it? Um, but going back to your question, I had two questions for you. You're saying Spurs are blowing hot and cold. I'm guessing that maybe you is your bench not that good at the moment. Is that, is that the issue? You can't bring people on when you're struggling, or not at all, not at all. Let's have a look at the Spurs lineup um, against Luton. Um, Vicario in goal, and then the back four of Pedro Poro, Romero, Dragushin, and Udogi. In midfield, Saar, Pasuma, and Madison, and then the front three of Hunmin Son, Kulusevski, and Werner. Kulusevski actually came off um, for Brennan Johnson at half time, and Brennan Johnson proved to be an excellent sub. Yet again, oh, um, jo yeah. Johnson's yeah. been involved in six league goals as a sub this season, two goals and four assists, uh, the most of any uh, player in the top flight this season. Um, I'll be honest, Jazz, I I'm expecting two changes in this game uh, from the team that face Luton. I'm expecting that Van der Ven will come in for Dragushin, and I'm expecting that Brennan Johnson will replace Kulusevski on the bench. And oh, really? Yeah, I am. Right. Um, and, and, and this makes it that we've got a very strong bench. And this is exactly something I was going to talk about with you, because that would then um, show our bench as follows. Hoybier, Richarlison, Emerson Royale, Lo Celso, Kulisewski, Dragushin, Benton Kerr, Davis and goalkeeper Austin. I think that's a very strong bench. It's very good, but you're probably looking at some of thinking you still need a striker, isn't it? A proper striker. They, they, are they really, is um, Charleston a really striker? I don't know. I don't know what to make of him. Werner, winger slash striker. I think you still need a Harry, well, not, well no one's going to get Harry Kane again, but you need a technically a proper striker who's a, who is a striker, then you can, you can, all the guys behind him can play off him. That's what I'm thinking. I think that'll be the cherry on the cake, I think. You you've, mentioned, you've mentioned about the transfer windows. What I love about Ange is the fact that he really does target players that are very versatile, that can play in a number of different positions. We know that Timo Werner, uh, not that we've seen it yet, but we know that he can play on the left, on the right, through the middle. Brennan Johnson, exactly the same. Hunmin Son, uh, you know, can change, um, you know, through the middle. And, of course, we've got Richarlison. He's had a lot of problems, a lot of uh, problems off the pitch. But, of course, he scored a fair few goals this season as well. Um, what do you make of Richarlison, Jazz, as a, as a West Ham fan looking in? I'd soft and laugh at him, Chris. I think he's one of those that he's a bit of a rogue. Um, he's not my cup of tea. I don't think I would buy him. I think there's a he came from Watford, I think, a lot, a lot of money wherever he went before he came to you guys from Everton. I can't remember. Everton, now, yeah. He's just one of those. He can't finish a lot. He's not a good finisher. It's like I used to laugh at ha uh, Havertz at Arsenal. It's, them two are similar. They make me laugh. They're worth so much money. But 
on their day, yeah, they'll get a couple. But how how often is it their day? I, I don't think that often. I don't have confidence in these type of players for me. And if he went, recycle the cash, get someone else in. He's not for me. Not for me, Chris. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rely on him. He's not reliable for me. He's he's more often than not. He looks a bit clumsy sometimes. He loses chances, misses chances, makes the wrong decisions, misses sitters. But then, yeah, you get those one in five. I know you went through that form around December, January. He started yeah. to, but yeah, he needs he needs to prove a bit more to me. I think he's he's he has more off days than good days overall. So, nah, not interested in him. I don't think a lot of him. Don't really worry about him either. No, not for me, mate. The, the only question I had, Draguzin, Draguzin, what was he all about? Is he all right? Has he settled in? Draguzin he's only played about. a couple of games. Um, he's only played a couple of games so far. Um, he looks a really decent defender. Of course, he turned down Bayern Munich to join Tottenham. Um, and he he wants to prove himself in the Premier League. And uh, at the moment, he is putting in extra training shifts, two hours on the pitch and an, an extra hour in the gym every single day. He is hungry. He wants... He wants to play Premier League football. It's going to be, I'll be honest, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to get game time when you've got two quality centre-backs um, in Romero and Van der Ven. Um, but of course, it is great having that competition and, and great having, um, you know, another quality centre-back at the football club. So, you know, Andrew's building and, uh, you know, as every transfer window goes on, I'm sure that he will build more and more and more uh, and the squad will get stronger and stronger, which is great. Um, is, he, and, is he fast? Is he is he fast? Is he pacey like all the signings and um, Angs making? He's fast. I, I, you've got to be fast when you're playing in that back line uh, for Ange Postecoglou, 100%. Um, and his stats were very, very impressive uh, for his previous club, uh, Genoa. Um, you know, not yeah. many players got past him and, and, and scored, um, you know, against him, so to speak. But yeah, a real quality signing. And as I said um, earlier on, I'm very, very impressed with uh, the transfer window so far under Ange. And it was a, it was really, really good and clever business by Tottenham in January. Um, do, you, do you have the, do you have the left foot, right foot combination in the centre half pairing? Because that's always we always look to do that, but we really do at West Ham. Is one yeah. left foot predominantly right, or is it both footed? I don't know. Of course, we, we've still got players like Ben Davis at the football club. I know some fans, um, you know, want to offload these types of players. But as Ange Postacoglu said in a press conference a couple of months ago, you know, you cannot have 25 superstars in a squad. It takes all sorts. And he also mentioned that the likes of Ben Davis, one of the best trainers at the football club. Um, you know, so you do need a good mixture of players um, there. But you know, I've no doubt at all in the next transfer window, we will offload a number of players and, and, and bring in some real quality yet again. But it's about progress. And as you said earlier about, you know, bumps in the road, we're going to go over a few potholes as well. We had a pothole a couple of weeks ago against Fulham. Um, but, you know, if Spurs can get European football, which it looks highly likely now that we will next season. You remember, Jazz, we played no European football this season. We were out in the League Cup in the first game out of the FA Cup in the second game. So, you know, at the end of the season, we've played 41 matches where a Premier League team plays a minimum of 40. Yeah. So we've only played yeah. 41 games. So it's it's yeah. incredible. I've really, I've really missed the European games, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Especially because you've always been in it recently, Champions League, more yeah. often than not. And yeah, definitely. But yeah, that hopefully, yeah. You, I mean, you got to, yeah, you got to nail the top four, hopefully, and then see what money you get in the summer. Hopefully a bit more than other managers because he's, kind of proved himself to be responsible in signing players and most of it's worked out. But yeah, European football, Champions League football and league, yeah, very hard, isn't it, to balance the two? But yeah. Yes, yeah, so from what you, from right. what you've seen, do you think Tottenham are good enough for Champions League for next year? Do you think that Spurs um deserve to be in the top four? I'm looking at the league table now and I would I would have no doubt. I think you're better than Villa. We smashed Villa. We drew one on, but we, we played them off the pitch. Yeah, Liverpool, Arsenal, City, Tottenham. Yeah, United, no, no. They're nowhere near you, Villa, no. Then you got us and Newcastle and Brighton messing about. Nah. Yeah, you're fine. Definitely. T fourth position, no problem, mate. Yeah, I think you've been good. What, been what would be a successful world. season for you? European spot again, mate. We're used to European football, three years. So, yeah, that, that's that's what the shame is. We had sixth place nailed down. We were five, six clear of anyone else, and we've totally messed it up now. It's hugely in the balance now. 
And this is the business end of the season where you mentioned your squad making the difference at Luton. This is what it's all about. We've got nothing on the bench. We got rid of Ben Rama, Kera, one or two others, replaced them with no one. Calvin Phillips has come in. We can't even count him as an addition. What's going on? We're, we're, we're tumbling down, Chris. We're tumbling down. You know, we there's nothing on the bench. He won't use any of them because they, they don't fit in anywhere. And we weren't able to recycle it and bring people in that he wants to use. And that's a huge handicap going into the business end of the season. You're not going to win many games like this. It's, it's a 1995th minute, 100 minute game these days, VAR, as you know. Yeah. 65 minutes tomorrow, mate. We're going to be hanging on wherever. We're going to be struggling, mate, because we can't we can't rotate anyone. It's, it's, it's a big problem. Jazz, what's the atmosphere been like at the London Stadium this season? It's a bit the same, Chris. A bit the same. I don't, I don't like the stadium. I don't like the area. I don't like the commute. I don't like the walk to the ground. I don't like the way it's not our ground. We don't... We, we have a minority profit out of what happens on match days. We, we, we The shops, the food stockists, they're not West Ham. They're some external company that does all of that. In three of the stands out the four, there's no rooms, no boxes, nothing apart from where the tunnel the players come out of. Got a few rooms in there. It's a pretty cold place, mate. Not much history going on in there. Just average, mate. The crowd's been... I wouldn't say it's greater or worse than any other, mostly any other Premier League ground. As you know, as we all move into these new grounds, we lose a little bit on the way. And um, yeah, it's 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 all right. I mean, tomorrow's evening under the flight um, floodlights. I think you'll be all right. You'll be all right. I think European nights are a bit extra special for some reason. So I think it's just all right. It's not bad or good. It's just yeah, but better than what it used to be three four years ago. So we've got slightly better players in our team than when we first moved into the stadium. Like you said, Bowen, kudos, Paqueta, get you off your seat sometimes. But it would be better if we had a manager who actually played more fast-flowing, risky entertainment football. That's what really gets you off your seat. You know, the shots on goals, the corners, the wingers running down the byline like Werner. We don't, don't have much of that sometimes. We sit back, then we counter-attack, and then... Yeah, by hook or crook, we get some results, some we don't, mate. I think it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Six and a half, seven out of ten, something like that. Yeah. Jazz, what do you miss about Upton Park? Because I'll tell you what, I missed the trips to Upton Park. It was a, you know, a, a classic old football stadium. I used to love going there and always would visit the uh, the Nathan's Pie and Mash before the match <laughs> to, have, uh, to have dinner there. What do you miss about Upton Park? <laughs> I'm a lazy sod, Chris. So what I miss is is how how everything was close together. So if you did get out of the station, it was a literally five minute walk to the ground. Whereas at up to this London Stadium, it'll take you half an hour to walk all the way around. It's such a huge <laughs> complex. So I think where everything was compacted together, Upton Park, and the local burger guys, the vans, the program sellers. Uh, the scarf sellers, they're all banned from the ground. We're not allowed to have any of them. It's very, you miss all of that, the smell of the onions and the little people selling badges. And there used to be a guy next to the church in the alleyway selling ribs, the rib man. He's famous, the rib man. <laughs> He's got one leg, was in the army. So all these little characters have gone and a lot of the older guard have refused to go to the stadium. They don't go anymore. So it's all about tradition and yeah, it's, it's a bit of that, mate. And um, listen, the ground wasn't great in a lot of ways, right? There's one stand that needed knocking down and we did need to do something about the ground and we didn't for what reason or another. But it's more about, yeah, just the local people, I think, I suppose, with their little shops and close vicinity of being able to go into your little local, more local pubs. That's another one. We've only got one pub and it's crap. I don't go there. I often drink way away from the ground. I don't go to Strat. I hate fucking Stratford. I hate it. It's so big. It's a monstrosity. You get lost in there all the time. You've got to be mad to have a 60, 65 stadium next to Westfield. It's madness. We, that's why we can't, we can never have a home boxing day game. I don't know if you know that we can't have that. Yeah. We, we, that used to be one where we used to play you guys a lot, New Year's Day, Christmas, Boxing Day and all of that. So it is what it is. The future, we might get new owners in and they'll knock it down and rebuild it because the land is valuable. We've got a new mayor coming in, hopefully. That will change it a bit. We're not, not getting any traction with the current mayor and the current people. We've fallen out with the current people, the legacy committee, and it's a mess legally. That is a bigger problem for West Ham around the corner than Moisey and all them lot. What's the future of us as tenants? Because... The landlord could be bankrupt, Chris. They're, they're losing too much money. And then obviously, if we if we lived a house on rent and the landlord went bankrupt, yeah, you'd be kicked out. 
but we've got some mm. agreement, Karen Brady, where they've got to pay us money. They've got to help us move to a new ground. It's really complicated. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that next couple of years, mate, what happens down that, you know. It, it looks a bit – have a look tomorrow. It looks a bit messy in a lot of ways. No one's cutting the grass anymore, Chris, because we don't have to do it. They ain't got no money to do it. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of a standoff. It's a mess, mate. Yeah, it's a – yeah, I've got to. I've got to admit, Jazz. I thought when I, you know, the last time I spoke to you, you were pretty negative, and and this time I've spoken to you, I thought you'd be a little bit more positive. Is, is there no, is there no other positive things to talk about from your side? No, no, no. The front four. I, I love Paqueta. Love Kudos. Is that love is that Darren, it? Love Alvarez. No, I'm carrying on Alvarez. Um, and Tony's a pain in the ass. He's 33. Now, what what it is is I'm ambitious. And I know that he's done the hard things really, really well. We just needed one or two, and he doesn't want to do it. And that's why we're losing a lot of the games. If we had a striker up front and he played football in a better way and slightly younger team, mate, we would be fifth or sixth, no problem, comfortably. Instead of 2-2 two -two with Sheffield United, 1-1 one -one with Burnley, 4-3 Newcastle, 5-0 Fulham, 6-0 Arsenal. These are not normal results, are they, Chris? It's not normal, yeah. mate, to do that. Yeah. And I know the flip side is we've beaten Arsenal at Highbury, you beat you guys, we've beaten Man United, beat Arsenal in the League Cup, in the quarterfinal um, Europa. It's very up and down, but it shouldn't be after the manager's been there four or five years. It shouldn't be that case. He's had enough money. We gave him all the rice money. We gave 100 million the window before that as well. So, yeah, some players have come in and done well, but we wasted a lot of money and a lot of 20, 25 million pound players. Agard, our 33 million centre half from Morocco, he's, he's shit, mate. He doesn't get anywhere near the two. We don't even bother playing him anymore. Corne, 20 million from Burnley, won't get a game under. Um, Moyes won't sign him, won't play him. Danny Ings, 150,000 a week. You can't buy Danny Ings if you're not going to play two up front. It's a waste of a signing. Hardly played, mate. And I could go on and on. So a lot more things that you guys might not be aware of why we are getting frustrating. I know we're on talks for every bloody week with them winding us up and saying, why, why are we doing this about Moisey? But it is, it is that kind of situation, mate. There's a lot of comments coming in, Jazz, uh, respecting your honesty of, of talking so open and honest about your feelings about your club right now. Um, players that, we, that you just mentioned there, players like Danny Ings, will they be on the bench? Will they be your so-called game changers on the night? Danny Ings, right. What David Moyes does, he doesn't do any substitutions normally until 85 minutes, 84. he will not bring anyone on. No chance of that. He's, if we go 2 3 nil down, he will not change anything. So Danny Ings could come on after 88, 89 minutes. But if you take Antonio off and you bring Danny Ings on, it's it's a pointless. Danny Ings can't play up front by himself. Nothing's going to stick to him. He's not physical. He's not really going to run down the channels, Chris. Waste of a time. Other striker we've got is Mabuma, youth player. He's probably started one game all season. He's on the bench. I don't know why. He never comes on. Corne, he'll never play him. He never brings him on. He'll either bring on Johnson, the fullback. Calvin Phillips, I doubt it after what's been happening. But that that's all we've got, mate. Ben Rama's gone out on loan. Um, Kara's got gone out on loan. Um, what he downs a CDM at Southampton, he's on loan over there. Um, that's about it, mate. I think. Yeah, that's about it. If I have a quick look at the Newcastle, what bench we had there. I don't think there's much to get excited about if I have a quick look at that. Yeah, so while you're looking at that, what while you're looking at that, tell me how good Caduce is because uh a number of Spurs fans in the last couple of days have said, Chris, this is the guy to watch. I've seen him play a couple of times. He looks pretty decent. And of course, it is another player that Spurs were linked with uh, you know, in the last couple of years. Right. Before I go into that, yeah, the other subs are Grandad Creswell and the Grandad Ogbena. They're about 70. 76 if you had them. So that's it. <laughs> Kuk, kudos. I think he was about to go to Chelsea. Something happened. Um, Ghana International. Magician, mate. Magician with the ball. Left-footed, right-footed. I think he's, did he, he definitely scored against Arsenal. I don't know if he scored against Spurs. I can't remember. But, yeah, great player, mate. One of the best players out there. Really, really lucky to have him. Um, but, again, playing for the wrong manager. You know, when you when you got that kind of skill, you don't want to be playing with David Moyes, mate. He'll curtail you as much as he can, even though he still shines, mate. So very strong as well. Very strong, can hold on to the ball. And he's, yeah, very good finisher. A lot of assists. And he's, so, yeah, Bowen, Paqueta, Kudos, 
then three other musketeers reliable all day long nine ten out of ten every game antonio's sixes and sevens and eights out of ten eights very rarely but eight always against tottenham so the front four are fine but it's about 90 minutes 100 minutes added on time what's on your bench what's not on your bench what can you rotate? Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're fairly stamina wise, a fairly strong team. We keep going till the end under Moisey. We're not that pacey. I don't think our dynamics, that's a different play structure to you guys. You're, you're going to be doing playing, zipping it about like any, anyone's business and interchanging quickly overlapping. We're not, we're not like that. We're slow far, uh, maybe down the wing sometimes um, more, more kind of set pieces in it, corners, free kicks, that kind of thing. We're kind of, yeah, two different styles, mate, as you know. Yeah. We, we know that both sets of fans will certainly be up for it. Um, Jazz, um, John Brooks will referee this game, uh, VAR Andy Madley. What have you made of, and I think I asked you this question earlier on in the season, but I'll ask it again now. Um, what have you made of VAR this season for you and, and how has it been? It's really bad now, Chris, really bad. When I met you, I think I said we have not been affected by it up to that point. But, mate, since then, oh, my God. I think the, the Gordon thing, I mean, I mean, I don't know about Spurs, but, I mean, there's four or five people watching the game and then they're taking five minutes to decide. Yeah. I think we broke the record in the Villa game. I don't, I don't know, mate. I think it's I'm a bit worried I, I, about it. Let, let me ask you then, as a football fan, what would you like to see change? Because we all have a moan. We all we all we all moan about it and these you know decisions. And let's go back earlier on in the season. You know that Liverpool Diaz goal. It should have stood against us. And uh, you know that communication was absolutely terrible. And then of course the game got restarted. The goal wasn't given. Uh, happy days for Tottenham, but sad days for Liverpool. But you know that incident was shocking. Should have never ever happened. What needs to change for you? VAR is good. What I would change is that I would have X players um, mandatory, compulsory, that the VAR is X players. That's what I would do. They have to be X players to be VAR. They understand the game. They know when someone's taking a mick when they're not, and that Gordon thing with um, Phil Phillips. Yeah, that's the only thing. I'd give it another chance, but you've got to put X players in there, um, Chris. Whether it's, you know, the boys all kicked off TV, Matthew Le Tessier and Sunas and them guys. Very clever people. Respected yeah. people. Captain something more, you know? Yeah, put X players in VAR, every single one of them. Uh, and let's see how it goes, I think. Yeah. Jazz, if I was to ask you, um, predict where you will finish in the league and predict where Spurs will finish in the Premier League at the end of the season. Because, interestingly... Okay. You've got Manchester City on the last day of the season. And I also wanted to ask who you think will win the Premier League. You know, sometimes your heart rules your head. But if I start off with where Spurs are going to finish, yeah, um, let's have a look. Yeah, it's out of you and Villa, isn't it? You and Villa. I haven't looked at the fixtures, but... Oh, God, that's going to be close. But we've, we, 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 we've still got Chelsea away. We've still got Manchester City at home. We've got Arsenal at home. Don't Liverpool away. Manchester. You guys always beat Man City, who I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll finish fourth. I think we'll finish. I think we will finish ninth, I think. Because because of the squad issue. Otherwise, we would be much higher. About ninth. So we'll miss out on Europe. But then we don't know how, how low it's going to go. I'm hearing because the British teams are in doing so well, it could go down to eighth or ninth, the European positions. And I think about eighth yeah. or ninth, we'll finish. You'll finish fourth. In terms of, I tell you what, we spoke about Arsenal last time. And let me start by saying, out of the three at the moment, how they're playing, Arsenal's playing Don't do bad. it, Jess. Don't they're playing it. no 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 before i get there they're playing better than the other two they got less injuries than the other two um okay they're in the champions league already it's it's just injuries chris it's just one cog out the arsenal guy got injured they'll collapse like a deck of cards whether it's the captain or rice or Saka, one of those three misses three four games they'll collapse and it's just not happening mate they're not getting any injuries they look really confident, but yeah, I'm not going to say they're going to win. I'll never say that. Um, I'm not really impressed with City, mate. Um, 
I knew I knew Arsenal I knew Arsenal would get closer because of that signing of Declan Rice, which of course, you know, you know, you know a lot about Declan Rice, but um, you know, you certainly improved that team. Liverpool, of course, have got injuries, Manchester City have got injuries, but you know, their squads are so good. Um if I if I was to predict and put money on it, I would go with Manchester City because they've yeah, got so yeah, much experience. Good, yeah. Good guess. Yeah, you sit your Liverpool. If if City had yeah, because Diaz was missing at the weekend. Um the other guys, and there's two, three missing. Uh, Walker was missing. And Liverpool, Alexander, was it Arnold and Robertson? They're all missing, and one or two. Jota's missing. Who scores so many goals for them, right? Key, key players. So Liverpool, yeah, City, maybe, yeah, because of their history, isn't it? Even though they're still in the Champions League, City, Liverpool. Yeah, I'm not going to say Arsenal. I can't, I can't stand them, mate. And I, I never used to mind them, but now last, last twelve to eighteen months since Arteta's come in can't stand him mate all this rolling around cheating and no yeah. mate yeah yeah so i think city liverpool see how it goes isn't it mate even though city yeah they're not as, i don't know sometimes they don't look as good but they grind the results out um but it is close but yeah we'll see i think uh, really, well yeah you, you guys could have a big say in the uh who who wins the title of course you uh you go to manchester city on the last day of the season and as i said we've got we've got to play them as well and arsenal and liverpool um, just wanted to ask you, Jazz, before we get score predictions, um, your European run in the Europa League, how has that been? And of course, as I mentioned earlier, by Leverkusen in the next round, unbeaten in the Bundesliga, it looks like they are going to be winning the German title this season. Harry Kane is not going to be winning the Bundesliga as he would have thought, as we would have all guessed that he would have won the Bundesliga this season. Um, but that, that game against Bayer Leverkusen, that is going to be one tough game isn't it one tough tie um, like i said the, the ten or eleven we got on the pitch i'm very confident with the issues with the managers set up and in-game management subs and squad so because our squad is really really low now it could anything could happen if, if we had that extra striker on the bench and maybe one other player i'm not afraid of leverkusen in europe last three years we've been unbelievable we probably lost i think we only lost Two games, is it? Is it two? Something like that, maybe? I can't remember. Though. Always winning the group. Really, really good. And and that goes back to how strong the British clubs are, really. So I'm not, not really afraid of them, mate. We've got the second leg at home, which is always beneficial. We're, we're seasoned. I mean, funny saying that. A lot of them have played in Europe. They've, they've done all right. No worries on that, on that flex at all. The worry is that the business end of the season, have you got enough in the in engine room as a manager, got enough brains to change it as and when needed, rotate it as and when needed, rest players as well. Those are the key things that make you what's going to happen. And Moisey ain't got that much brains in him. So we're well, not afraid of Leverkusen, just afraid that, yeah, have we, have we got enough on the bench when needed? And again, yeah, one or two people not playing or suspended, it affects us. We've never won any game with Paqueta not playing. Another stat for you. Not won any games with Paqueta not playing and rarely lost when he does play. So one or two people missing it does affect us, mate. So, yeah, not afraid of Leverkusen. Looking forward to the home leg anywhere, which I'll be at. Um, but I think we're going to fall short in one or two areas and it's our own fault by not doing enough in the window, mate, in January, really. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm feeling. You mentioned Harry Kane earlier, Jazz. Is, is is he cursed when it comes to trophies? It's, it's it unreal, was, isn't it? We're all giggling and I think, what the hell? My sons are saying they're even out of the cup, Dad. They always win the domestic cup. They're out of the cup. I mean, they seem to be doing really well at the beginning. He was breaking all the records and things. But he, Harry better sort out Arsenal for me. I'm telling you now. I'm relying on him to sort the Gooners out. I want him gone and smashed out. Um, but I'm really looking forward. I hope, I hope they Arsenal get knocked out. They... Port, I should have done him at their ground. I hit the host and bar two, three times in the other leg and whatever. So I'm hoping Harry, Harry does it for everyone against Arsenal. But it is sad. It is sad. It is sad. And But yeah, we'll see. I think they're going to get a new manager in next season. Alonso's staying where he's not going to be him. Liverpool not going to get him. We'll see what happens. But yeah, Bayern will be all right next season, I think. I don't know. But if Alonso stays, then it's going to, it's going to be quite tough again, isn't it? Unless they'd lose a lot of their players to other clubs in the window. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, very, very surprising. Yeah, yeah. Jazz, last question for you. Are you feeling confident for this game on Tuesday evening and your score prediction? Yeah, I was thinking about that earlier on, and it is a bit like um, weighing it all up. We're at home, slight advantage. Got good starting 10 or 11 advantage. Front four, really, really good. 
Um, I'll go for 2-2 two, two then because I'm worried about the bench and from the 65th, 60th minute onwards, you're going to see a downward traje- trajectory, I think, from us because you won't be able to rotate anyone and bring anyone on of great substance, mate. You'll be all downhill from there, I think. that It's a big thing. It's a big disadvantage, Chris. So just mixing it up and weighing it up all out there, just 2-2, two, two, mate, something like that, I'm thinking, mate, yeah. We score a lot of late goals. I think that um, I agree with you on the two-two, but I think that I'm going to add in a late goal from Hunmin Son, um, and then you could, you could and, win it three-two. Yeah, then it'd be a knee, a knee slide over by the away end. It'd be a fan, you know fantastic atmosphere. It'll be great. I can see three-two, four-two to Spurs because we're very open, mate. We're letting loads of goals. That, yeah, that, that that's believable to me easily. What's not believable is nil-nil or we win one-nil. I don't I don't see anything like that. It's going to yeah. be who scores the most and who makes a few mistakes. It's just that kind of game, I think. And we're very open and disorganised. We can't mark anyone, mate, you know. So it's going to be a lot of gaps, a lot of gaps. And maybe it's the modern game, I don't know. Because you see all the goals scored at the weekend's games, an example. My God, there's some goals. Hardly any clean sheets anymore, Chris, in the Premier League recently, recent yeah. times. It's all gone out the window. Yeah. Jazz, you know what? I, you played it down so well last time. And then, of course, West Ham comes to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, grabbed all three points by winning 2-1. I really hope that that is not the case again. But you've been a fantastic guest again. And um, as I said, you've had a lot of love from a lot of Spurs fans in the comments today. And uh, there is just under a 1,000 people watching live. So if you don't subscribe to the channel, please do hit <laughs> that subscribe button. And also subscribe to... Jazz's channel, West Ham Irons channel. Um, Jazz, what can people expect if they head over to your channel? Madness, mate. I usually have a few rums and cokes. <laughs> a lot of honesty, sometimes a bit too much swearing. Um, usually we go live after full time because I don't go a lot. I used to have free season tickets, but last year and a half, due to the standard of the football quality, I don't go as much. My son does. I go now and again. But yeah, you expect honesty, fireworks, some words. Yeah, entertainment, mate. We don't sit on the fence on my channel. We say it the way it is, but back up what we're saying. So, yeah, a lot of instant full-time reaction shows. I'm doing another show a day later, which is called called The Last Word, which I think is good. It's when you've calmed down, you've had a, a night to sleep on it, and yeah. adrenaline is gone low again, and then you can reflect on the press conference and see what other people are saying. So we, we're doing that. We used to do a lot of things in and around the ground. Hopefully I do that. I want to do the history thing again, Chris. I used to love doing it, but that takes a lot of work, mate. Cam called the footage, editing and going to the sites and doing some history um, sort of knowledge and history and you know research. So I, I'm trying to mix it up. But the thing, I've still got the same problem I told you last time. I'm struggling to get guests, mate. Struggling to find the right people that want to come on with me. I can interact. So a lot of the West Ham fans are not reliable. The, 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 and they've got a camera that works you can't even see them they don't even log on on time you see them 15 <laughs> minutes after the show goes live makes me go mad mate so i get all of that i don't know if you you seem to have a good 10 20 bunch so that's really good i think and it's something i need i think reliable good people knowledgeable speak well not afraid of the camera and then hopefully we can interact off each other so that's the one or two niggly points in and around the channel but yeah, still trying to find time around it in and around my work, which is always a challenge, mate. But yeah, it's West Ham's our sort of our hobbies, football. So we love doing it and sharing our views, going in the chat on Twitter and things like that. It's interesting, mate. And yeah, it's good. Well, thank you, Jazz. And uh, yeah, we do have a. I'm very lucky to have a fantastic team of uh, of regular guests that come on uh, talk about Spurs and um, like like you mentioned. You know, we go live straight after the game, literally straight after the whistle. So there is raw emotion sometimes. Some people swear. Some people, you know, jump up and down and. Uh, you know, all emotions on this channel every single time after every game. But hopefully things are on the up for Tottenham and uh, hopefully we can keep progressing under Ange Postacoglu. Jazz, as I've said, you've been a fantastic guest. Um, lastly, where can people find you on social media? Yeah, Twitter is um, uh, at Jazz West Ham. Um, and then obviously the West Ham Irons channel. Just um, put that into your YouTube and hopefully it's there somewhere. So... Obviously, nowhere near as big as your channel. You're doing a superb job. But I've I've kind of – I used to start channels and end them in a partnership and do it myself. So I've messed around a few things myself. But I'm, I've decided to keep going. So, yeah, West Ham Irons channel on YouTube and then at Jazz West Ham on Twitter if you want to find me on there, really, yeah. 
Well, Jazz, thank you so much. If uh, if anyone is going to the game, enjoy it. I'll certainly be there at London Stadium cheering on the Tottenham Hotspur boys. Hopefully, it'll be another three points for Tottenham Hotspur and hopefully it'll be another good week for Spurs. Jazz, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. And if you don't subscribe to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button, like, share and comment below. And if you're listening to this on, on an audio platform, please do hit that follow button and leave a review if you can. Have a great week. I'll see you in the next one. Come on, you Spurs.